Thank you for joining me, Bertie Brits, in today's broadcast of The Love Way. It's such a privilege to share the message of God's unconditional love with you in the area of the fulfillment of the law. I know that if you understand the fulfillment of the law, you'll get it right to live the love of God, the peace of God, the righteousness of God in your life. You know, it's one thing to hear about peace, to hear about love, and then the law comes and just accuses you and tells you, you cannot live that holy life. It's not for you. You know, the other day I spoke to one of my friends and he was just talking about doing good to people. And we've got such a religious system in our minds that we think we're only allowed to do good to the church. We're only allowed to give money to the church. And he is giving to the church as well and to ministries. And um, he was just doing good, giving large amounts of money to unsaved people, people that just feels a compassion on friends and stuff. And after that he phoned me and he said to me, you know Bertie, um, what do you think of this? And I realized that the law, even if you do good, will accuse you. Because he said, I wonder, you know, is the motive of my heart right? Is, is what I've done good or not? And you get this whole accusation thing that comes your way. The law will never approve of you. The law will never say that you are good enough. The law is there to show you that you are a sinner. It's to show you that you need a redeemer. And that's what the law was there for. In the previous sessions... We've discussed the basic thing of the law, that the law was not given by God, but it was implemented by man. And then given by God through angels unto people. So God never implemented the law. We must realize that God, if you think that God implemented the law, you will think that God's your enemy. God is not for you having a relationship with Him through do's and don'ts. God's not for you trying to measure up to a certain standard so that you can speak to Him. God loves people. He made people to function out of a simple principle, and that is the Holy Spirit that lives in you. Before we go into a further interpretation of uh, Genesis chapter 3, I want to just speak a little bit about Scripture interpretation and the way Jesus interpreted Scripture. You know, we get a lot of theologians these days. We get a lot of people that's masters on scripture interpretation. But I believe the final authority on scripture interpretation is Jesus himself. And let's go and look at how Jesus interpreted the law and the prophets and how he looked at that. And if we can look at how Jesus looked at that and we can interpret it in that way, we will find life in our lives. Amen. I'm going to read from Luke chapter 24 verse 25. Then he said unto them, O fools, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Verse 26. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things, and to enter into glory? And beginning at Moses, and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scripture the things concerning himself. I want to read verse 27 again, because that's a key, key verse. And beginning at Moses, which is the law, the first five books of the Bible, and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So, when Jesus read Moses, the first five books of the Bible. Now that is, man, you get all types of laws in there. You get laws that speaks about what you should eat. Law that speaks on how you should sacrifice for sin. All types of laws are, are there. And Jesus took the five books... The first five books called Moses, and he took the prophets, spoke, now that's the Psalms, all the prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah, all those things. And then he said, it says there, and he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Now I believe the way Jesus interpreted the law was, what was my part to play in the law? What did I have to come to fulfill in the law and the prophets? Remember Matthew chapter 5 from verse 14 to 17 where Jesus said, I've come to fulfill the law. I've come to fulfill the prophets. So what did Jesus tell these people that were walking to Emmaus? I mean, what, what, was their, what was his vision in sharing with them? He was sharing Christ in the law. Not Christ enforcing the law. Not Christ making the law stronger in people's lives, but how he came to fulfill the law. Because the only thing that Jesus had to do with the law and the prophets was to fulfill it. 
So Jesus came to fulfill the law and the prophets. He explained unto them his role of fulfillment in the law and the prophets. And I want to tell you, every scripture, when you read the scripture, you must see Jesus. And that's what I want to say about this, now Jesus interpreted scripture. The way Jesus interpreted scripture was by showing him in the scriptures. And how many times when you read the word, you feel condemned? Like I said in one of the previous broadcasts, the Bible says that God loves those and He blesses those that seek Him. So uh, God is pleased by faith and by those who diligently seek Him. Hebrews 11 verse 6. How many times when we read the scriptures, we seek what we must do for God. And we seek ourselves. We look at what we've done wrong and we, we look at the scriptures and we want to see the holiness of Jesus and then we try to copy that holiness and we sh see how far we fall short. I tell you, if you read the Bible from a perspective of I fall short or I need, you will not ha have a love for the word of God. You will feel, I don't want anything to do with the Bible. And that's why many people and people that are listening to me to right now, will sit in front of television, listen to sermons, but when he gets into his room, he will not want to read the Bible because he connects condemnation with the Word. Now, I want to tell you this. If you can't see Jesus in a scripture, and when I speak about Jesus, I speak about His obedience to the law, His death on your behalf, His obedience on your behalf, and His resurrection on your behalf, you are not seeing the Word of God in that scripture, and you cannot interpret it. True interpretation of scripture is when you first come and decide, I'm going to see Jesus in that scripture and not myself and what I need to do for God. I've got good news for you. The Bible is not about what you must do for God. The Bible is not about what you must do for your neighbor. The Bible is not about what, how you must love your neighbor or love God. The Bible says here in His love that He loved us first. Here in His love, not that we loved Him, but that He loved us. So if we minister the gospel of Jesus, <laughs> hallelujah, you know, it brings such a joy to me. If we know we can see Jesus in the word of God. Every scripture in this Bible must speak the word. And the Bible says, and the word became flesh and dwelt among, among us. And that word is the word of his love, is the word Jesus, the message of through Him we live. The message of through Him we have righteousness. The message of through Him we've died. The message of through Him we've been punished. The message of through Him we are obedient. Because of His obedience. That is the gospel. That's the word of God. God's reasoning. How does God reason? How does God think about you? God's reasoning about you is all based in Jesus and not based in your works. Hallelujah. Now, what's very interesting in the scriptures, if we go and look a little bit down, let me just find the verse here, verse 32, and they said to one another, this is after Jesus revealed himself through the scriptures unto them, the word says, and they said unto one another, did not our hearts burn within us while he talked with us by the way, and while he opened to us the scriptures? There's two things there. Number one, Jesus opens the scriptures to you. If you read the Bible and you see what you must do for God, that scripture is closed unto you. The Bible says you are veiled by reading the law. So in every scripture you can read the law or you can read the word. If you read the word in a scripture, if you, if you are willing to see Christ doing that scripture on your behalf, the scripture will be opened unto you. And that's what he said here. They said here, they said Christ opened the scriptures unto them. See Jesus... Even in every Old Testament scripture you read, or Old Covenant scripture, and the, that scripture will be opened unto you, and you will see the New Testament in that Old Covenant scripture, when you see Christ in that scripture, and not what you must do for God. Man, there's so many scriptures, I can't, I can't even touch on it and make this real practical, because so many people will be so shaken in their system, they will say, man, I can't take this, this is too much for me. Like Jesus when he said, you must eat my flesh. And you must drink my blood. You know, it's the same type of things. If we can realize that we must see Jesus in the Old Testament scriptures. And that is the opening of the scripture. And the other thing that blesses me so much about this. Is they say here that their hearts were burning within them. They were, man, they were thinking of Jesus. They were experiencing the anointing. They were experiencing the blessing of God. The power of God inside them. Why? Because the scriptures were opened unto them. 
Hallelujah. I want to say this. Every time I read the Bible and I see Jesus, my heart burns within me. I'm so blessed. I feel the anointing of God. I feel the love of God. And it's the same with you. If we can start to see the New Testament in the Scriptures. Now let's go to Genesis chapter 3. And we're just going to read a little bit more on where man implemented the law. Now, if we can realize that the law was implemented by man, what will happen in your subconscious mind is that God will not be your enemy anymore. It will be a peace that comes into your heart because you will see that God is with you, God loves you, God cares for you, and God is on your side. And it was never His plan to bring the law into your life. His plan was for you to live by His Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's read from verse 15. Genesis chapter 3 verse 15. It says here, this is after Adam and Eve have sinned, God speaking to Adam and Eve now. He says, And I will put enmity between you and between the woman, between your seed and between her seed. It shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. Now, I believe that if we want to read that scripture, we must see Jesus in that scripture. And the moment you see Jesus in that scripture and how he fulfilled that scripture, you can equally say that you have fulfilled that scripture because we are in Jesus and Christ is in us. Amen. So, what does it say here? It says there will be enmity between the seed of the woman and the seed of the serpent. So, there's two types of seed in this world. And we must realize that that seed is still alive today. He says the one will bite the one seed will bite the other seed in the heel. Now the way I see that it is it's the devil and the seed of the serpent and their bite is in your walk. So the bite of the devil is that you walk right, that you do right, and that's where he bites you. But the Bible says that the God, the God of peace will soon crush Satan underneath our feet. So, how will Satan be crushed? He will be, he will be crushed under our feet and will be by the God of peace. The more we know the gospel of peace, there's peace between us and God. The more the thought pattern, the head of Satan, the thought pattern of Satan is, by what you do, you will become. That's what he sold unto Adam and Eve. He said, listen man, you are like God. And Adam knew that he was like God. But then he said, you can be like God, not by God indwelling you, but by knowing right and wrong. And the moment he said, I want, I'll be like God by knowing right and wrong, all of God was removed from him. So that he by himself could be like God by knowing right and wrong. And the moment that happened, condemnation and guilt was in their hearts. They were afraid of God. There was no peace between them and God. So the only way that we're going to see God as a God of peace is by knowing that it's not by works, but it is by the intuition of the Holy Spirit, by God indwelling us and living through us. Right. He says here, let me read verse 15 again, And I will put enmity between you and between the woman, and between your seed and her seed. It shall bruise your head. So the thought pattern of the devil will be bruised, and you shall bruise his heel or bite you bite him by the heel then it says unto the woman he said i will greatly multiply your sorrow and um and thy conception in this in the sorrows thou shalt bring forth children and thy desire shall be to thy husband and he shall rule over you and unto adam he said because you have hearkened unto the voice of your wife and has listened of the of which i commanded you saying you shall not eat of it cursed is the ground for your sake now listen, what happened when Adam partook of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which I call the ministration of death, because that tree ministered death unto them. What happened when he partook of it? The, a curse was pronounced because of what he's done. So he brought a curse upon the land. Now let's go to Galatians chapter 3 and let's just see what the word of God says there about the curse. How can there be a curse if, there, if, if there's no law? Because so many people say the law only came uh, in, in, in Exodus, but the principle of by what you do, you must become. The principle of works was implemented by Adam. And the things that you must do was given in Exodus chapter 20, which we today see as the law. But the law is more than just what you must do. The law is 
to have the mentality that by what I do I'll become, and you can put any type of law in there. I must walk around the church, fast three days, uh, bind the devil, you know, break forefather curses, go into my history, and man, you know, this whole he- going into history thing is a lot of rubbish. What you must get into and know is that the Bible says that peace on earth and goodwill towards man. That word goodwill in the Greek means a good reputation. So then you've received a new reputation in Christ. You've received the nature of Christ and His past. You've received the past of Jesus. So if you go into your history, I've got good news for you, my friend. You'll find nothing wrong. Man, isn't that powerful? You will find nothing wrong. You will find, man, I've got peace in my heart. You will find, I see holiness. I see righteousness. I love to go back into my past. Because I see, I've died for all my sins in Jesus Christ. I love to go back into my past. Because I see, the law has been fulfilled. I fulfilled the law in Jesus because of His obedience. I love to go back into my past. Because I I hear a voice coming from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. You might say, Bertie, but you're taking this thing way too far. And you, man, you're too serious about this. <laughs> Hallelujah. Then I'm in good company because Paul said in, in uh, Galatians and also in Philippians, he says, I fully identify myself with Christ. And fully identify means I fully identify. Hallelujah. Man, like I said previously, do you know why the Bible says we've been made the righteousness of God? For a simple reason. Because we've been made the righteousness of God. Hallelujah. Face it. Sit with it in your heart and indwell it. Think upon that. Amen. Now let's quickly get back to Galatians chapter 3 verse 10. It says here, For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it's written, Cursed is everyone that continues not in all the things which are written in the book of the law to do them. It says here, For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. And here it says in Genesis chapter 3 that the moment Adam partook of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, a curse was pronounced over the ground, not because the ground became under the law, but because he came under the law and then he had to work. He implemented the works mentality. And then nature was changed because he had to work then to get something uh, to to bring forth fruit. Now, you know, he also says here, that there will be enmity between the seed of the woman and the seed of the serpent. Now let's look at that in, in, in uh, Romans chapter 8. And we're going to read here from verse 6. It says here, For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. For the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So it says there's two seeds. You get the carnal mind and you get the spiritual mind. Those who are spiritually minded and those who are carnally minded. And to be carnally minded, to be minded by what I do, I'll become, you become an enemy of God. You will find that the serpent will bite you in your heel. The moment you become carnally minded, you will, the first thing that will come to your mind is, have I walked right? As I, what I've done, was it right or wrong? You will not know where to put your foot. But I want to tell you, the righteous, those who say, I am the righteousness of God, their steps are ordered of God. How were they, how's my steps ordered of God? Jesus walked my steps. I'm righteous. His holiness is my holiness. Amen. It's as easy as that. I mean, it's so simple to see. And if you've got just a humble heart, you can see it so clearly in the scriptures that Adam Cain, He implemented the mentality that says, by what I do, I'll be like God. A curse was pronounced. The Bible says, cursed is everyone that's under the law. So Adam came and he brought the law. God came, he took the thing Adam uh, uh, implemented, wrote it down on stones, and then gave it through angels unto Moses. And that was just the, the whole thing. The thing that Adam did there was so full of death. It's called the ministration of death. The ministration of death was written and engraved on stones. According to 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Man. If we can just look into that, we will see such a change in our lives. If we are willing to take the good news 
for ourselves. If we are willing to say that this law is a ministration of death. I want to touch on something quickly as we run to the end of this program in Romans chapter 6. You know, if you hear this, you might say, but Bertie, isn't this just a license to sin? Isn't this just, I, man, I'm just going to sin. Like I spoke to somebody today. And the guy said to me, you know, Bertie, you make it too easy. Now, I want to say it this way. If Jesus made it easy, if He says, my burden is soft, or my yoke is soft, my burden is light, come to me, all you who work hard, come to me. It's easy, it's light. If He says that, who am I to make it difficult to stand against the work of God? I can only speak what God says. Amen. I can only walk in, in the easy gospel. It's a simple gospel. Jesus lives through you. Amen. Now let's quickly look at the scripture. And this really blesses me. It says here in Romans chapter 6 uh, from verse 20. It says, For when you were the servants of sin, you were free from righteousness. Verse 22. But now being made free from sin and become servants of God, you have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. Now what does he say here? He says, when you were under the law, when you obeyed the law, you were freed from righteousness. It means you've been delivered from righteousness. When you are under the law, you are delivered from righteousness, and righteousness will have no hold on you whatsoever, but you are enslaved under sin. Now these days, you know, it's illegal to sell people as slaves. It's not a slave trade anymore. To be enslaved under the power of the devil and the power of the law is something that only Jesus could set you free from. You are freed from righteousness. You will struggle to be righteous. You will never have an opportunity or an open door to walk into righteousness because of just one thing, because of the law. It says here, for when you were servants of sin, how do you serve sin? And in the next broadcast, we'll look at that in, 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 in Romans 6, is by the law. When you are a servant of sin, you are free from righteousness. And you are bound by sin. Now it says here in verse 20, but now being made free from sin. How are you made free from sin? By Jesus obeying the law and fulfilling the law, so there could not be any law that makes you a sinner. You are freed from sin. If you are freed from sin, that you say, I cannot sin, because His seed is in me, His good news is in me, and by what law will I be condemned? Because the law has been fulfilled. The moment I'm freed from sin, the, what does the Bible say? It says, I am enslaved unto righteousness. It means I am bound by righteousness. That means it would be as easy for a person to have righteousness manifesting in his life as what it is for a sinner out in the world that knows nothing about God, sinning, living, just as living in adultery, murdering. It's easy for a person like that to do those things. For a sinner, it's easy to sin. It will be just as easy for somebody to live righteous if you can be freed from the law. God wants, you to, God wants to tell you today, He's freed you from the law so that you can be a slave of righteousness. And you might say, Yeah, Bert, you see, there's the thing. You must live right. Man, if you hear that, you must, just, you must buy the CD, listen again, because that's not what I've said. Paul said, I don't even try to do right. He said, I don't even try to do wrong. I don't live by right and wrong. The good I do, I find it's Christ living through me. Hallelujah. Man, I want you to open your heart for this good news. I want to pray for you because... I just feel in my heart as I'm preaching here that there's so many people that say this, this might be so complicated to understand, but actually it's so easy. Man, may you just see Christ in the Scriptures and may your mind be enlightened by Jesus in the Scriptures and may you just experience the peace of God by Jesus in the Scriptures. Hallelujah. Let's just pray together. Father, I bless every listener right now with an enlightened mind, that they might see the good news of Jesus in the Scriptures, that they might be freed from sin by being freed from the law, that they might be, become slaves of righteousness by knowing the finished work of Jesus. Father, may people see the life that there is in Jesus and the death 
that there is in do's and don'ts and behavior modification type of teaching. Lord, I thank you for your life that's just flowing forth in the lives of so many people. I, I also see somebody, you've got a poor vision in your right eye. God's just cleaning that up right now. I want to tell you, your sins are forgiven. In Jesus' mighty name. You are being healed right now. You're being touched right now. And your life is changed. Amen. I want to ask you to just respond to the number on your screen. Send your SMS, your praise report, prayer request. And we would love to pray for you. I pray for every person that sends a request. Thank you and God bless you.